And it's our great pleasure to have today's speaker, Matt Timaro, speaking about the Piatic Milner K theory of Piatic Ring. Okay, thanks very much uh, for the introduction and many thanks to all the organizers for, for having me today and for organizing this seminar in general. Um, so I want to talk about today some 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 work in this general theme of recent developments around piatic motivic cohomology and piatic k-theory but the the focus today will be on what what is sometimes called the simplest part of k-theory namely namely milner k-theory we'll see some some new explicit descriptions of of milner of piatic milner k groups of as the title suggests piatic rings um so let me start with uh, start with the introduction So I'm sure you all know the definition, but let's recall it anyway. So for any, for, in fact, and I'll use this for any ring. Um, R, we have its Milner K groups. So these, these are defined in the following explicit way. I tensor together J copies of the units of R, and then we mod out by this so-called Steinberg relation, specifying that symbols of the form R1 tensor, excuse me, F1 tensor through Fj are going to be zero whenever uh, two of distinct terms add up to one. So that's for some distinct indices, A and B. And the advantage of Milner K theory is that it's easy to get maps out. Because we have this nice presentation in terms of, of generators and relations. And these, at least in the case J equals two, these are often called Steinberg maps classically. But the problem is that it's often very hard to say anything about the kernels of these maps. For the usual reason that you've got some, some group presented in terms of generators and relations, and then it's, well, it's typically hard to describe you know, how, how sums of these relations are going to intersect with some given, some given subgroup, for example. I mean, it's the familiar problem you've got generators and relations. Um, and lots of problems about Milner K theory, for example, require you to check certain maps out of it are injective. So we'll, we'll come to this later when we discuss, discuss the Gersten conjecture. Uh, so firstly, it, it does, not what I want to say, it looks, I mean, as a definite, it looks ad hoc, uh, and maybe Milner was a little bold in proposing it as a, as a general definition beyond the case J equals two, in which case it coincides with algebraic K theory. Um, but uh, as we all know, it turns out not to be. it turns out to be motivic in, in the following precise sense. So we have this theorem of Nestorenko and Suslin, uh, reproved by Bert Totoro, which says, let's take a field. So K is a field. Then in fact, we can identify Milner K theory with the right piece of motivic cohomology. Namely, what we tend to call the Milner range of motivic cohomology, where the degree and the, and the motivic weight coincide. And this is, this is quite, it's easy to write down. In fact, what Totoro does, he writes down both maps both ways. I want to give you the map one way just for the fun of it. Uh, so here we define motivic cohomology in terms of, of, in terms of blocks higher Chow groups. Uh, 
in which case, just for dimension reasons, most of the beginning of this uh, complex of higher cycles is going to vanish. And the first non-zero group you vanish, the first non-zero group you hit is, is the one we're trying to identify here. And it will be given as follows. You'll examine certain formal sums of curves on, uh, let's see, P1, K, throw out, what point do we throw out in this indexing? We throw out one and we've got power J plus one uh, intersecting some faces. Let me not tell you exactly what they are uh, properly. So those will be the relations describing this higher Chow group. And you'll have some boundary map going to formal sums of points in PK one minus one, which intersect uh, the co-dimension one faces of some points correctly, which just means that they're not those faces. So you just end up looking at sums of points in like just affine line minus zero and one uh, J times. And then we can just write the map down. We take our class in the Milner K theory and you can just send it to whoop, down here. We just send it to the point, uh, the tuple F1 to to FJ. And what Totoro does is he checks explicitly that the Steinberg relations are something to do with the relations that you see coming from the next term in, in, in block cycle complex. And I, I kind of like this point of this point of view and this result in general because it, there's this remark that Balenson made in his, in his 1984 absolute Hodge classes paper 84, I checked the 87, sorry. Uh, he suggested that motivic cohomology in general uh, should be something like, you know, these are his precise words, something like, I check this, non abelian. left derived functor of Milner K theory. So the Milner K theory is what you see in, hop to, in top degree, and then you try to force it to spread out into lower and lower cohomological degree. And Bellinson's idea was this is what's supposed to produce motivic cohomology. So in some sense, Milner K theory is the simplest part, but in some other way, it's also supposed to be the fundamental part. In any case, to get back to get back to some precise statements, uh, the next result I wanted to recall about Milner K theory uh, was Block Carto. So this is the Block Carto conjecture, uh, which follows from all the work of Rost and Vyvodsky. So now we assume that we have some integer which is invertible in our field. And then we have a natural isomorphism describing the Milner K theory of our field now modulo L um, in terms of its a tau cohomology with coefficients in the jth tape twist. And this really, I mean, the, the, the more fundamental result is really Bellings and Lichtenbaum. All these, all these implications are a bit confused, but first of all, I mean, there's another, the, the fancier result is Bellings and Lichtenbaum describing motivic cohomology in terms of the tau cohomology. And then you appeal to Nestor and Gosserslin. 
describing motivic cohomology in terms of, of Milner K theory. And from that point of view, between these two theorems, of course, it's, it's the block harder, which is, which is substantially harder, as if I see a sort of half sketch how you prove Nadarenko source, then you just, you just write the map down and, and check it does the right thing on, on the relations, and then block harder is an awful lot harder. Um, so in the periodic context in a moment, we'll see, well, we'll not be interested in fields, we'll be interested in, in much more general local rings, so I, I wanted to make a remark just to point out that these results do hold in much greater generality for fields. So firstly, the, the nesterenko suslin isomorphism, so this is going to remain valid, in fact, for any regular local ring uh, containing a field, And to prove that, you just use Gersten resolutions on everything to reduce to the case of field. Uh, so the Gersten resolution for the right side here for the motivic cohomology, uh, I guess this is due to due to Vyvodsky. For the left side, it's due to Kurtz, and that lets you more or less formally reduce statements for regular local rings uh, down to the case of fields. For block Carter, we can do even better. I mean, Brock Carter is even going to be true if I replace K by any local ring containing a field. Uh, because in that case, you can just you can reduce to the regular case. by rigidity, so that is to say, I pick some big in smooth algebra over my field, subjecting onto my, my random local ring with a Henselian kernel, that's uh, easy to construct. And then both sides of the block uh, isomorphism, they're both uh, insensitive to this Henselian ideal. As soon as things are elf, because all the principal units of this ideal will be, will admit elf roots, so they'll just, they'll not contribute to both sides. Well, okay, for the Italco homology, you need a real rigidity statement. So you can just ignore this ideal that reduces you to the in the smooth case. Uh, then you take filtered co-limit to get to the smooth case, and then you apply Gersten to get to the, the field case. And so just by these types of formal tricks, uh, we in fact get the result for any local win. And in fact, even the Nestor and Kosuzlin result would be valid for an arbitrary local ring, as soon as you decided what you meant by motivic cohomology in that context, as soon as you wrote some suitable thing down with the properties that you want, then the result would, would formally extend from, from the regular case to the, to the arbitrary case. So as I say, I mentioned that because the results that I'll be presenting will hold in, in much greater generality than these classical ones, but in fact, it's, it's really just a, a a manifestation of the fact that we understand the periodic motivic cohomology in some greater degree of generality than, than usual motivic cohomology. And so I finally, I wanted to make some, some remark. No one's, no one's complained yet, so either, either my headphones don't work or your microphones are muted or, or you're just being polite, that for, okay, people laughed, so you must at least hear me, that's a good sign. So for local rings, with small residue field it's classical that there were problems with with the Milner K theory of local rings and so you should replace these Milner K groups by what we call improved Milner K theory sorry uh, thank you before, yeah, go for it. Before I forget, there is a question. How do you define the Milner K theory for non fields? Uh, same way, same way. Uh, I, I, as I said at the beginning, I, I define Milner K groups in this way for an arbitrary, in fact, for an arbitrary ring. I use the same formulas for fields. Ah, sorry. Yeah. I mean, I, I can write it down in that degree of generality. Whether it's interesting is another question. 
but at least for local rings with infinite residue field, that is that is really the right definition. And then that's, it, it does everything you want. Um, so as I was saying, if you if you've got very small residue field, then some of these uh, kind of generic Bertini arguments arguments to find enough elements in your symbols they they don't work, and so you need to slightly modify the definition, and that produces this improved Milner K theory um, of GABA uh, and Kurtz. But uh, I'm going to in fact omit. So what do I want to say? We implicitly use this but uh, I'm going to omit it from the notation. I'm not going to change the notation because the notation is usually a hat and there's going to be too many periodic completions and hats. And so let's, let me just suppress that. So we omit, so we don't say we omit this from the notation. As long as you're happy, uh, assuming everything has infinite residue field, then it's, it's not a problem. So, so which of them satisfies the Gersten resolution? Ah, the improved one. The improved so you one. could define the improved one by declaring it to satisfy the Gersten resolution, right? Right, you could in fact, you could in fact, at least if you contain a field, that's the case where we know Gersten thanks to Kurtz, then, then you could really, you could just define it in that way. In the regular case, in the regular case, but you want it for arbitrary local rings. And you only believe Gersten in the regular case. And this improved, I mean, I, I'll just make a passing comment. This improved minimal cater remains so mysterious in some ways. We, we, we still don't really understand the relations that appear when you pass from usual minimal K theory to the improved variant. And these, um, these problems appeared a little bit in, in the project. And maybe in the periodic context, we could say a few new things about, about the sort of relations that appear, but. Uh, not in a not in a very satisfactory, exhaustive fashion. Okay, so what are we going to do today? I'm going to present some analogous results. Uh, in mixed characteristic, so we won't be over fields, and or. Uh, when L uh, is some prime power, which is not invertible. In fact, okay, so I mean, we're always looking at the residue characteristic, but sometimes we'll still be interested in, in FP algebras and sometimes we'll be interested in, in mixed characteristic. Um, and to really focus on what's going on in, in the periodic context, we will be imposing pretty much the following standing hypothesis, all our rings uh, will be P Henselian, uh, except when they're not. Uh, that is to say that, so I look at the ideal generated by P and I tend to request that this will be a Henselian ideal. So the roots of polynomials can be lifted from mod p up to p, um, excuse me, from mod p up to a. Uh, so for example, uh, you could take a to be periodically complete. But the reason it's kind of nicer to work with rings which are only p Henselian, uh, I mean, the category of such rings is, 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 behave, is better behave. They're closed under filtered co-limits, for example. And it means I don't need to worry about difference between periodic completions and periodic derived completions so much. So given such a ring, we then associate to it this sort of syntomic cohomology complexes, say. Um, for weights, so these are these ZPJs of A, so these are some P complete complexes. Let me give you a quick reminder on where these come from. So first, as I said, these are some P complete complexes. Uh, 
so defined first in BMS2 and in the quasi symptomic case. Which included the definition of, of included in the definition piadic completeness, then by left Kahn extension process, you can extend them to all, say, derived p complete uh, simplicial rings. In the valence and fiber paper, with and to you, Matthew and Nicholas. Uh, so everything there is still P complete. And as I say, just for sort of simplicity, it's useful to have them in the P and Celian case, which we do in a rather formal way. Uh, by declaring the ZPJ to be the ZPJ of the derived periodic completion. That is only a reasonable definition for the Hanselian rings. Uh, otherwise, you should factor in some contribution coming from the from the piadic et cohomology of the generic fiber, uh, but in the p case, that will be entirely detected by the completion in any case. And so that will, that will give you the right construction. So the general expectation is that uh, these provide some good theory of piadic Ital motivic cohomology. And so in particular, we're going to be looking more explicitly at their groups. So the cohomology groups of this complex, this is supposed to be a theory of, so I say, piadic ital motivic cohomology of A. And there were various uh, ongoing projects trying to verify various aspects of this of this expectation. Uh, I don't know if it's appropriate to include in, in one seminar uh, a retrospective advertisement to, a, to another seminar. Uh, I gave some talks in, in Oslo a couple of weeks about these things in general, if you, if you want to see more, the notes are at least available. So as I say, this, this general theory, this symptomic cohomology is supposed to provide us with some, some good general definition of piadic etamotivic cohomology. Now we want to verify various aspects of that, of that expectation. Is the idea that it's piadic etamotivic cohomology consistent with the idea that it's also piadic delinea bellinson cohomology? I'm never really sure what Delina Benison cohomology is. Absolute, absolute Hodge cohomology, if that makes sense. But is that, I mean, is that something that's supposed to exist of a finite field, for example? No, that, that's something Archimedean. Right, so I, I don't think the question applies. I mean, your Archimedean rings are never going to be p -hansilian. Right, I, I'm just saying- You're like right, that, that, should, that should show up in the Archimedean context of motivic cohomology, but everything here is very non-Archimedean. Yeah, I just mean in terms of the, the intuition for what syntomic cohomology is supposed to be. Well, yes, I guess in that sense, yes. In that sense, it has some superficial similarity to, to Delina Benison cohomology, yeah, yeah. I don't know if that provides a satisfactory answer. Uh, so as part of this expectation, uh, the first result that I want to present today is that we have a, a piadic, very general piadic form of this nestorenko suslin isomorphism.
So we take a local for any local and standing hypothesis p Hanselian ring. We have natural isomorphisms identifying the Milner range of this atomic cohomology uh, with the Milner K theory of A. Modulo, uh, modulo some, some power of P. Uh, I should get mod some power of P. In fact, it doesn't matter whether I put the mod P to the R there on the inside or the outside, but that's a, a sort of a posterior statement. It's not clear. Uh, so that's for all positive R's and J's. So let me give you some examples of what this identification says in practice when we can actually uh, start identifying uh, the two sides. So let me start with examples in characteristic P. Uh, in particular, I should mention, I mean, if you're characteristic P, then you're, you're P and Celian. Uh, so if I take a regular local FP algebra, and we'll just imagine something essentially smooth over a field, uh, then what does this say? Well, then in fact, one already knows what the two sides look like. We're not getting anything new in this case. It says that the Milner K theory of A mod P to the R is computed by the kind of level R uh, log Duran width forms. which is also what you see in the periodic automatic cohomology. So this, I say we've got these logarithmic uh, Duran width forms. So this is defined to be, you just take the subgroup of this Duran width group Uh, generated by what? Well, in fact, it's exactly the symbols that you need to make the map from Milner K theory surjective. So you model by D of the Teich model lift of F1 divided by the Teich model lift of F1 wedged together with D of the Teich model lift of FJ uh, modded out by Teich model lift of FJ uh, for various F1 through FJ in the units of your ring. So as I say, this is this is not really new. The first identification here between the Milner K theory and these log Duran width forms, this is the classical block Carter gaba theorem, which is in fact, I mean, was already understood to be the, the analog of the block Carter theorem at the characteristic and is, uh, is very old part of this story. And then the identification between uh, the degree J, weight J, the uh, etamotivic cohomology, and these log Duran width forms, this is already, I guess, contained inside BMS2. So in this case, the isomorphism, as I said, was already available, but I wanted to show you explicitly what, what both sides looked like there. Maybe can I ask? I mean, yeah, yeah, please go for it, go for it. So here, uh, so if, if you ask about hij for i not equal to j, is that just a zero? So I, so I feel like I'm hearing two questions at once. No, okay, go go ahead again. Sorry, i not equal to j. That's right. Would this just be zero for i not equal to j? So so on the right hand side, for i in this case of a regular local FP algebra. For i strictly less than j, it would be zero. But for i equals j plus one, there would be a be a contribution. But everywhere else it's zero. Uh, so the second example, which is which is a bit more interesting, 
uh, I could take instead O to be any valuation ring of characteristic P, maybe a, a massive valuation ring of, of, of big rank, uh, in particular not Netherian, uh, then in fact the same result holds and describes the, the Milner K theory of this valuation ring mod P to the R. So I can write then again, because it looks like the same result, but now it's no longer classical. It describes the Milner K theory um, of this valuation ring modular with power of P in terms of these uh, logarithmic Duran width forms. And so in particular, I mean, somehow in fact, the, the, the hard content of this sort of result uh, is saying that the D log map from the Milner K theory of this valuation ring mod P embeds into differential forms. So a, what does this mean? Why does one care about such statements? Well, it's giving you a kind of CDH local description uh, of Milner K theory in characteristic P. No, CDH locally, everything's described by valuation rings. So it says that if you want to understand Milner K theory locally, and locally means that you're even allowed to do things locally up to blow ups, then in fact, uh, Milner K theory is just given by, by, by these omega log forms. So, sorry, can I ask a question? Yeah, yeah, please, yeah, go. So, if you had a resolution of singularity, would this result be a consequence of the result? Yeah, definitely, definitely, that's a, that's a good question. So, indeed, if we had resolution of singularities, then the result for valuation rings would follow immediately from the regular local case. But somehow we're interested in bypassing resolution of singularities, so we directly prove this type of result, which then gives you some CDH local control, even without having resolution of singularities. And the way in which this type of, of result goes is you, so you go to this Piatic Nesterenko Suslin, and then you've got to describe the right-hand side. But now, so you, you've got to say something about these ZPJs, but okay, in the original construction, these come from, from topological cyclic homology, or you can construct them from prismatic cohomology, but these are all invariants, which somehow ultimately are ultimately built out of variants of derived Durham cohomology and derived crystalline cohomology and really then come down to some understanding of the cotangent complex of A and the results of GABA and GABA Romero which tell you how the cotangent complex of valuation rings look. So you can bootstrap up from this to understand ZPJ of evaluation ring and consequently get information on Milner K theory that I have no idea how to access directly. Uh, so next, let me give a couple of examples in mixed characteristic. So the first of these will be a kind of vaguely perfectoid setup. So let me, in fact, let's take some perfectoid fields of mixed characteristic. I might as well take uh, completed algebraic closure of QP. Inside there, I've got its ring of integers OC. And I take A to be a, so P Hanselian as always, local, uh, what would I want to say, local, local. Well, one can imagine various hypotheses. Uh, let me, uh, let me just take it to be in smooth. Right, if, as long as you take something which is sufficiently P completely smooth, then, then all this works. But this just imagine that in fact that we're that we're hensilizing some 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 point on a smooth OC scheme. Uh, then this tells me that the Milner K theory of A, again, modulo some power of P, I can again calculate it, this time in a block Curto style fashion. Uh, in terms of the, the nearby cycles associated to A. So in fact, I'll just get the Atau cohomology on A1 over P 
uh, with coefficients in the j state twist. And one gets that because again, it's calculation somewhere in BMS2 that the, the periodic attenuative cohomology in this context is indeed just given by the uh, by the periodic tau cohomology of the generic fiber. And so that, for example, in fact, it, it gives you more or less a, a complete description of how the, the Milner K theory sheaf looks on a smooth OC scheme, at least in this Nevich locally. Uh, okay, but that's still, it's kind of a shame to do such things over, over OC. Uh, really, we want to be over some discretely valued base. So let's suppose we now take A to be local uh, in the smooth on the order of my adjectives keeps changing. P and C and local in the smooth over a complete discrete valuation ring V of mixed characteristic. Then that's what I want to state as being the second theorem. So uh, with A over V as above, then, and there were really two, two parts to this statement. The first says, so as I mentioned at the beginning, the difficulty with Milner K theory is usually to control kernels of maps out of it. Um, and the first part of this theorem is linked to a certain injectivity of a certain map that the Milner K theory of A embeds into the Milner K theory of A1 over P. And everything's mod P to the R. And then I can calculate the latter uh, by the same sort of periodic nearby cycle formula that we had a moment ago, which I mean, which one expects from sort of results of block Carter. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't catch it. In your second example in characteristic P, uh, there was no isomorphism with cohomology. No, that's well. Uh... Hey, that's a, that's a, that's a question of definitions. If I if I define this thing to be cohomology, then it's an isomorphism with cohomology. No, this thing. Sorry, to really answer your question, this thing here is what you see as the HJ of ZPJ. Okay. Thanks. That's not that's not obvious. I mean, that that's a, no. something you need to check. No, no, I mean that's 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 the theorem. In fact, that's not okay. Yeah, really, it's two theorems. The first theorem is you apply nesterenko suslin and then the second theorem is you've got to actually describe the H J Z P J of evaluation ring, which is is separate. Yeah, separate. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, so now we've got some some we're in some smooth setup over. Uh, complete DVR of mixed characteristic. And as I say, really, there's, there's two statements here that firstly, we have a type, oh, what did I make that a different color? Firstly, we have a type of Gersten injectivity that at least allows us to invert P in the ring and asserting that the map remains injective on the K groups. And then the second is a type of block Carter isomorphism. And a, a, a consequence of this, of this description uh, is that in fact, the Gersten conjecture holds in this context at least, uh, well, in fact, it, it holds for such an A and therefore, in fact, it holds it holds in this Nevich locally. So let me give you let me give you the geometric statement and, and the geometric consequences. So if I take some, let's say, just some smooth V scheme, and I look at the 
mod p to the r Gersten complex in Milnor K theory. So let me write that out. I see if I have enough space. So I start with sheafification of Milnor K theory on X mod P to the R. Then I've got some skyscraper sheaf coming from the generic points. Then I've got some skyscraper sheaves coming from all the divisors. But now for degree J minus one, Milnor K theory and so on and so forth. Uh, what's the end of the sentence? This is exact in the Nisnevich topology. So one really believes exactness of the sequence even in the Zariski topology that, that we can't say anything about because we've got this, this standing hypothesis that things have got to be p-Hanselian, but we at least get it in this Nisnevich topology. Um, because if you want to check this, either you check it at a Nisnevich local point on the special fiber, in which case you're p-Hanselian, or you check it at a Nisnevich local point on the generic fiber, in which case you contain a field and you can just appeal to Kurtz, to the fact that Kurtz has already proved Gersten in that case. So, and, and consequently, you get a block Quillen formula uh, describing the co dimension J uh, Chow group of cycles on X mod P to the R as the Nisnevich cohomology with coefficients in this uh, Milnor K theory sheaf which gives you some, some, some consequences for, for cycles like functional reality under, under, under certain maps. Is there anything else I wanted to? So I got 15 minutes left and uh, I'd like to give you a, a flavor of how the proofs of these results go if there's no, if there's no further questions about the statements themselves. So the first general technique is some systematic use of left Kahn extensions. Particularly from smooth algebras. Which is a relatively recent technique that has been introduced into motivic cohomology. Um, motivated mainly by this observation of, of Bat and Lurie that a connective algebraic K theory is, is left Kahn extended in this fashion. I guess this works over any, uh, any base ring. So for any base ring K, I look at connective algebraic K theory on K algebras uh, to spectra and this will be left Kahn extended from smooth K algebras, uh, which more or less amounts to a, a reformulation of, a, of an older result that the relative algebraic K theory uh, for a map of simplicial rings can be computed term-wise as long as the map is a radical surjection. For example, as long as all the maps appearing are Henselian surjections. And then you can understand all the BGLs which appear and check that the, that the relative K theory, as I say, can be computed uh, term-wise simplicially. Uh, and from, so for a motivic manifestation of this, uh, which implicitly follows from the Baylands and Fiber paper,
is that if one looks at this general theory of piadic atomotivic cohomology and I truncate it, well, Balins and Lichtenbaum formalism, some general philosophy, tells you that this should be related to some theory of piadic Zariski motivic cohomology. Consequently, it should be related to algebraic K theory. And consequently, whatever property we expect of algebraic K theory, we should also expect of it. And what turns out to be a, a true uh, uh, manifestation of, of this idea is that if I look at this truncation of the ZPJs uh, as a functor from p-hensilian rings uh, to the derived category, then that will be left Kahn extended, or at least ignoring any p-completion issue uh, from, uh, basically I wanna say smooth things, but uh, okay, my rings are now p-hensilian, so they're not finite type, but I can do, as well as I can, p Hanselian in smooth z uh, localized uh, away from p algebras. So this gives us a way. Remember that our goal is this sort of periodic Nesterenko Susan isomorphism comparing Milnor K theory and Hj of Zpj. This gives us a way to control the right side, the H and J of Z uh, via this type of left Kahn extension argument. But then we need something similar for the Milner K theory side. And that's the following observation, which is easy to prove once you have the idea that it might be true. Uh, so let me give you, I'll give you the punchline, uh, the, 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 the slogan is that Milner K theory is right exact. So that is to say, I, I, I do the following. I have my Milner K theory defined on, say just on smooth local algebras over some base, it outputs for me some abelian groups. Then I can left can extend it to produce something defined on all local K algebras, which will now, yeah, I guess it's now gonna go into, let's say into simplicial, into simplicial abelian groups. Don't have a great piece of notation for this. Let me call it smooth left Kahn extension of Milner K theory. I haven't given you the statement yet. Uh, so then for any local ring, okay, local K algebra A, uh, just for some formal reasons, I can compare the H zero of whatever this process produces and uh, the Milner K theory of A itself. I emphasize in, in case it looks a bit confusing that the Milner K theory of A has not appeared anywhere in the definition of the left-hand side. The left side is controlled entirely by Milner K theory of smooth things and A might not be smooth. Nevertheless, for, just for functoriality reasons, you'll have a map. And the statement is that that's an isomorphism. So when you left can't extend your functor, it's H zero. In fact, it reproduces your old functor even on, on non-smooth things. And the idea to prove that is, as I say, it's just the, uh, an old style of argument to due to Quillen that if you have some functors with some satisfactory universal properties, then they're automatically right exact in this sense. And Milner K theory, indeed, if you look at the whole graded ring of Milner K theory, it has some nice universal property for maps out of it. And that essentially is going to let you produce a, an inverse to this, to this type of map. And the, the consequence. How did you guess to expect it? Uh, 
I don't remember actually. Oh, it's because it's true for GM. That's it. It's true when J. So when J equals one, the result is better. I mean, th th this is this is this is an older result. When J equals one, if you left can't extend GM in this way, you you just get all of GM. So the result is true for. The result is true when J equals one. And if you believe the nestorenko susan result, it's got to be, the, the proper sense has got to be true as well. That's, yeah, that was it, in fact, yeah. If you believe the nestorenko susan isomorphism, then you can see that this has to be true. That's very cool, thank you. So as I said, the, the consequence of this is then that, uh, oops, theorem one, reduces to case that A is uh, in smooth, still local p -hensilian, but we can get all the way down uh, to the case in which it's in smooth over ZP, just by left can extending the results from this case. Modulo lots and lots of problems with finite residue field that I'm ignoring because the proposition doesn't apply to improved Milner-K theory, it applies to actual Milner-K theory. And so every time you have a small residue, small residue field, you've got to worry about whether you're really making a statement about Milner-K theory or about improved Milner-K theory. And these are a, a real pain, but one then. Sorry, could you repeat again which K you consider at this, like when you take this functor Milner-K? Ah, uh, sorry, yeah, you're right. You're, that's a good point, that's a good point. In this proposition, it's, it's, it's naive Milner K theory. It's the definition that I wrote down at the beginning. There's nothing improved. Yeah, that's that's. Okay. I I, I, I'm, I cheated with notation. You're right because okay. I said I, I said I was going to use K J M for improved Milner K theory, but in this proposition, it's actually classical Milner K theory. And so the base you work over in this moment is. It doesn't. It doesn't matter actually. I mean, I take I'll take it Z P then for doing the periodic stuff, but it's, it, it could be any ring. In fact, in, in the proposition. So Schemes over any anything. Yeah, yeah. Okay, K really doesn't matter. Oh, sorry, I'm still surprised. Okay, <laughs> you continue. <laughs> mm, no, because it's somehow it's really a relative statement, in fact, about how you can resolve things, but in some sufficiently smooth way. It, somehow the, the base field doesn't really end. The base ring doesn't even really enter in. Um, So the, the second input is then um, the following theorem, which forms part of some, some work in progress of Bat, Clausen, and Matthew, which relates these general, uh, this general theory of periodic atomotivic cohomology to more classically considered objects. So let me not state it super precisely. I'll just give you the consequence that we need for the actual groups. So on smooth schemes um, over complete discrete valuation rings of mixed characteristic, uh, this is, let's say this theory of periodic atomotivic cohomology. Let me not even tell you exactly what I plug in. Uh, this can be identified with, so I say, so, let me say periodic completion of classical et al. motivic cohomology. I mean, this you you can just define using block cycles complex, which was systematically studied by Levine in the case of of schemes over DVRs. In this sort of periodic context, um, there's also work of, of Geiser, and then one can give, one can avoid the approach via blocks cycle complex and just write down explicitly what you expect this invariant to be, and that's what you find in work of Sato and Schneider. But in any case, the punchline is that the new theory identifies with the old one, and since one has these sorts of explicit descriptions of the old one, one gets the following consequence. So for my local p Hanselian 
in smooth Z algebra, this is what we want to study. Um, the HJ, so I've got my weight J, degree J, motivic cohomology of A mod P to the R. This can be identified with the kernel of Cato's residue map from nearby cycles. So that is the periodic Cato cohomology of, of the J tape twist on the generic fiber and Cato gives us a certain manifestation of the boundary map in algebraic K theory, which takes in, uh, as I say, uh, such a class in the Atal cohomology of the generic fiber and outputs an element in, oops, this should be an R, outputs a logarithmic Duran width form on the special fiber. in degree j minus one, as I say, because it's a manifestation of the boundary map in K theory, which will shift your degree. And therefore theorem one, which was this nestorenko suslin statement, uh, it actually reduces the theorem two. So I remind you theorem two. Theorem two is this uh, description of the, so it says two pieces. Firstly, that the Piatic, excuse me, firstly that the, that the Milner K theory embeds into the Milner K theory when I invert P, but overall, uh, but overall the statement is really just some comparison between the Milner K theory of A and the Atal cohomology of A1 over P. The hard step is linking those via an injective map. And that is exactly, uh, so as I say, theorem two is the hard work is checking that the Milner K theory embeds into this term. And it's more or less the same work then to identify the Milner K theory with, with that term. So in this way, as I say, theorem one reduces this identification uh, of the Milner K theory. And then the final step, I can just make a very quick comment on, is to return to uh, these old arguments where Bloch and Carter studied uh, periodic vanishing cycles and periodic Milner K theory originally and to refine their results. So what they did I mean, this was when they first proved cases of the block cutter conjecture for, uh, for complete discrete valuation fields of, of mixed characteristic. And they did this um, by studying graded pieces of periodic nearby cycles over complete discrete valuation rings. So for example, for A is above this local p Hanselian in smooth ZP algebra, they gave a, a short, they, the description of the graded pieces gives a short exact sequence, at least in the case when P is not equal to two it shows you that the whole periodic tau cohomology of A1 over P, let's work mod P now. So this has one simple piece coming from A mod P log in weight J minus one, another piece in weight J, and the final piece is simpler, it's just the differential forms of, of A mod P. Where this map coming from differential forms into the Atal cohomology, so you've got some class that looks like F over DG1 over G1 wedged together 
with dgj minus one over gj minus one, and you send this to, so f is an element in a mod p, I pick some random lift up to a, call this f tilde. Uh, so this thing here gives me a unit in, in a, even a unit in a one over p. By Kummer theory, I view that as a class in H1, and then I can cut that together by also lifting up these units, uh, G1 through Gj minus P. And what we do, so in block and cutter, they produce lots of maps of this form. In this way, they filter the piadi cattel cohomology. They describe for you very explicitly all these graded pieces. And what we say is the following, okay, I've got the Milner K theory of A, again, working mod P, you know, I should change color here. I've got my map coming in here, just the, the Galois symbol. And what I ultimately really need to do to prove theorem two is check that it's injective. And if it's injective, well, then this map must factor as follows. And what we do is we check directly that you can produce such a factoring. In fact, it's very easy to write down a formula for what the map should be going into symbols. But unlike Bloch and Carto, you have to work much harder uh, to produce this. And that's done through nasty, that's not a very technical term, nasty calculations with Dennis Stein symbols, uh, for those of you who know such things. And the case, the situation when P equals two is even worse, because uh, then you get some even worse maps from differentials coming in, which you again, you need to refine to some maps to the Milner K theory. You do some even worse calculations with Dennis Stein symbols. But eventually in this way, the effect this has is that block Carter's whole dis graded description of the, of the piadic tau cohomology can be descended to the Milner K theory of A. And that lets you check that the Milner K theory of A mod P will embed into the tau cohomology of, of the generic fiber. And then you do some game to turn mod P power, to turn mod P into mod P powers, which is, doesn't go through quite as cleanly as the, the argument goes through in the classical approach, but, but okay. And then, as I say, just to run backwards to the arguments, then you perform this left Kahn extension argument to get the results for, for general links. And so I'll finish there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very beautiful talk. Are there questions? Oh, thank you very much. Um, sorry, so if, if I could ask a question about, again, about the isomorphism between uh, Milner K theory and, uh, and motivic cohomology. So I, I guess I was wondering, uh, well, I guess what's it? Right, up, right, back at, right back at the beginning, Akio, theorem, I mean, Nesterenko, Switzerland, or the right, periodic form. Yeah. Okay, let's just go right back there, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I was wondering, so is, is that true? I mean, so if you have something which is, um, you know, say smooth over the integers, a local ring smooth, you know, in smooth over the integers, then uh, I guess one still has higher Chow groups and Milner K theory, is, 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 that, is the statement still true there? Uh, I think, ah, in, in, smooth, in smooth, okay, smooth, let's say smooth over the integers. I've got a feeling that's not known. Uh, for smooth over the integers. No, in fact, if it were known for smooth over the integers, then we wouldn't have needed to do half this work. We could just have applied your comparison to classical motivic cohomology and periodically completed it. So I think that was not known periodically previously, and I think it's up, but it is known rationally. It's 
just by some eigenspace argument for the atoms operators. Uh, so ah, maybe you can now deduce it for smooth things into ah, apart from this p Hensilian. Okay, so maybe you can now deduce this Nisnevich locally for smooth things mm -hmm. over the integers. But I, I don't think it's it's. I think without the Nisnevich local condition, I think that's that that remains unknown. Thanks. <laughs> Can I also ask, so, uh, I mean, it, it, with these comparisons with like the, the BMS to ZP of, uh, ZP of J's, I mean, those are, those are the, um, I mean, those are, those are like the Etal versions of Mutabit cohomology. But so a priori, one could imagine that when you take the Etal sheetification, there's some stuff in with lower cohomological degrees that also shows up uh, in the HJ, ZP of J. But so are, are you saying that, I guess that doesn't happen? Uh, maybe I'm, that shouldn't, that shouldn't happen. Uh, that shouldn't happen. I mean, the, the, Yeah, I, yeah, I, I don't, I, I, okay, I, I don't think I can give a more precise statement right now. I see something that's discussed discuss that afterwards, but I, I think that's not a problem. I think that's more just safe how you formulate the comparison isomorphism. Thanks. Um, one other question. Yeah. So, so I just, I just want to check that, that, I mean, I see this is all integral. And so, I mean, the, the rational version of all these statements, would that have been sort of known long ago and fairly easy? So it depends what you mean by, by rational. If you mean that I periodically complete and then invert P. Yeah. Well, okay. What can one mean by long ago? Because these uh, these ZPJ syntonic complexes have only been around for a few years. But uh, I guess I. But I mean, there was there was QP syntonic cohomology. Right. No, I think even in that case, ah, uh, well, okay. But then you can maybe just decompose everything with. Into Adam's eigenspaces, right? Yeah, I guess if you can just decompose everything to Adam's eigenspaces, then then maybe there's not so much to do. Uh, yeah, I, I I guess the rational results can be extracted in that way. That seems possible. Yeah, I mean, long ago was well, however you interpret it. I guess my <laughs> real question was, you know, when was when would it have been? Uh, it all it all depends how old you are. Yeah, no, but I think that could have been, I think the rational information could be got another way, yeah. Yeah, maybe I, I sort of said long ago, almost out of embarrassment for asking what might have been a, a very simple question. No, 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 that seems right, that seems right to me, uh, that seems right to me, yeah. Okay, if there are no more questions, let's thank the speaker again.